Aga Khan looks back on 40 years of his yacht club, Costa Smeralda. Fast and furious, the TP-52s attracted top-class field to Porto Cervo. Plus, extreme sailing, my new venture into multi-hull racing. This is the town of the heart of Costa Smeralda, Porto Cervo. It's built in the style of an Italian village, but its streets are lined with designer shops. This time didn't exist 40 years ago. The Costa Smeralda or Emerald Coast on the Italian island of Sardinia was wild and isolated. It was one of the few corners of the Mediterranean still undeveloped until a group of businessmen decided to build a yacht club. It's now a flourishing tourist destination with a busy marina. The project's backer was His Highness the Aga Khan. When you visit Porto Cervo for the first time, you imagine it's always been here, but that's not always been the case. No, uh, when, I, when I started here, there was absolutely nothing on the coast model whatsoever. No, no house, no habitation of any sort. And did you come here on holiday? I came here on holiday. Uh, actually, I came here in the winter of December 1960. And the Costa Smaller in the winter is not quite the same as in the summer. And uh, then I came down in the summer of 1961 and started learning about the beauty of the area. The quality of the water was outstanding. The beaches were amazing. There was a scope to do everything and anything. With some business associates, the young Aga Khan spent a few crowded days in Sardinia. They looked over the beautiful Emerald Coast and decided to go ahead with a development program. Karim was in a light-hearted mood. He became Aga Khan on the death of his famous grandfather five years ago. What was your vision for Porto Cervo? Well, it was to create a destination resort. Porto Cervo was selected by the planners as the bay where there would be a, a marina. Uh, of course, at that time, there were absolutely no marine facilities at all. Nowhere where you could come to key, nowhere where you could get water, nowhere where you could get food. Uh, it really was absolutely isolated. Today, the area has been transformed. Porto Cervo is a millionaire's playground, attracting world leaders and big-name movie stars on vacation. The Aga Khan's personal interest in architecture ensured the low-rise development blended in with the landscape, while the Yacht Club provides a thriving central attraction. This year was the 40th anniversary of the Yacht Club Costa Smeralda. What's been your highlights during that period? Two I would recollect, which was the first challenge for the America's Cup. Italy had never challenged, and as you know, it's a challenge for, by, done by clubs. So the Oca of Costa Mara was the, the, the first boat to challenge with Azzurra. I think the other one was to uh, win the blue ribbon of the Atlantic with Destriero, the first large high-speed monohull. And during the last 40 years, the, the needs of the yachting community has changed dramatically. I mean, the boats have got larger, there's, there's many more regattas. What's your vision for the next 40 years? How would you like to see the club develop? Well, I, I hope that this area of, of the Mediterranean will remain yachting friendly because uh, it is part of the leisure industry and therefore it has to be remain yachting friendly, which means managing infrastructure, managing the capacity to receive people well, look after them, meet their new needs, and there are new needs. So uh, I think we'll have to watch ca fairly carefully how we do that. I know now your, your passion for architecture is moving into other areas of the world. Yes. Well, I, <clears throat> I, I think that, you know, in, in another domain of my life, uh, I do a lot of work in the development field in the, in the developing world, and I think the yachting industry is becoming a global industry. I think the newly industrialized countries of Asia will become very, very important in the yachting industry. I think Africa offers many, many opportunities which are undiscovered. And uh, bigger and bigger yachts are being built. They're global ocean-going vessels. So I think that the scale and nature of yachting will change. The Yacht Club Costa Smeralda and the industry that has grown up around it have transformed the economy of this Italian island.
If the same model can be transferred successfully to the developing world, new communities perhaps may one day enjoy the same prosperity as the inhabitants of this emerald coast. Now let's take a look at some sailing news, starting with my own venture into extreme sailing. After losing my bid for Olympic selection, I'm not taking the easy option and putting my feet up. I joined the iShares Cup, a series for extreme 40 catamarans. The final event of the season was in Amsterdam, giving the crowds a close-up view of these high-speed machines. Taking the helm was very different from sailing my Olympic boat, the Yingling, which is a three-person keelboat and moves at a much slower pace. This was thrilling, but also terrifying at times. Team Basilica won the event, making it a clean sweep in 2007. For the first time in its 34-year history, the Volvo Ocean Race is to visit Russia. The historic port of St. Petersburg will be the final stop of the Round the World event, which is due to begin in Spain next year. St. Petersburg is the home base for the Russian entry. I believe as Russian we deserve to, to be in uh, such event, which is World War Ocean Races. And uh, I think uh, it's just fantastic. It's an unbelievable feeling to have all people involved and uh, build this fantastic boat uh, in the UK. So it's, it's just awesome. Rome hosted the latest round of the World Match Racing Tour, which was dominated by James Spittle, the star helmsman of Luna Rossa during the last America's Cup. Spiddle, who's from Australia, won the Latian Match Cup with a comprehensive 3-0 victory in the final over Sebastian Cole's Arriva Challenge. Spiddle and his crew from Luna Rossa remained undefeated throughout the event and earned 25 points towards their total on the tour. Still to come on the show, we go behind the scenes of the yacht club Costa Smeralda. Plus, all the action from one of Portocherovo's world-class regattas.